Welcome at Rackhorn. My name is Klaus Rack. Our subwoofer amplifier A409 is the newest within the A400 line where we have started around 12 years ago and every model like 401, 402, ETC was improved regarding the controls, regarding some inner parts and to be a really good subwoofer amplifier, not just a normal amplifier. And to show you the most important point, I had opened the back side and what you see here is a very big transformer and also what, what you see here is all the power supply section because the power from the AC which cannot reach to the transistor will not make you a clear good sound. The power supply is the most important point of a subwoofer amplifier and if you see other so-called subwoofer amplifier you see a small transformer and you don't see this big six pieces of 10,000 microfarad capacitors. Whatever is not enough to go through here will be added here at a base impulse which is just strong and in a moment in a sudden so it will stabilize the voltage of the power supply to flash in this extra charge so these capacitors charging and relaxing its power into the concept this is expensive this is expensive and that's the reason you see that always small and you see that small. These small parts here are not really expensive. What is second costly? We are using three pairs of new Toshiba transistors which are not driven to the limit so we have a reserve because this is an elephant. It's not a bird beep beep beep. This is raw power thing and therefore if you check another subwoofer amplifier, look at these components. The power switch is a hard switch, that means it's always on and off, no standby function, because we don't want to consume even 5 or 6 watts overnight and or just for a week to, to let it uh, warm up and to use power. Uh, there are two LEDs, one is protect, that means there's a shortcut or uh, over uh, power or any other problem with the amp. The clipping shows you that you're going to the end of what the amplifier can do. If it gets a little bit blink blink, uh, it's still okay with the base impulse, but if it's on um, steadily, you have to reduce. The uh, level here then comes a lot of control. We have a subwoofer high cut, that means you are setting that frequency that cuts off all the unwanted higher frequency example in the range of 40 50 hertz that you only send those frequency to your speakers which you want otherwise if you go over 100 hertz you will realize from your listening the subwoofer is there is there but uh, if you have a good subwoofer is big enough and you have satellite speakers which are capable down to 50, 60 Hz, go lower and your subwoofer sound better, you have less room resonances. This cuts off high cut. Then we are having equalizers. You can boost some frequencies. If you have a smaller subwoofer and you're not happy with the low bass sound pressure, you can boost it and you also can boost at that frequency that you want. So with this two setting is the boost level, how strong you boost and the boost frequency means where are you boosting. But be careful, boosting means you're pushing much more power into your little subwoofer and that's, that's the problem. Big subwoofer don't need a boost, small subwoofer don't over boost, don't destroy it. The other two mobs are just doing the opposite. They are decreasing some frequency. This is important for very bad room resonances. So if you 
find out that you have a boomy sound around 60 70 hertz you can try to reduce it with these two knobs next is a subsonic which cuts down the very low frequency as i said about the small subwoofer if you want higher pressure from a small subwoofer with limited possibility to produce it you can relax it from the very low frequency not to overpower mechanically and electrically to destroy it but even if you have a big subwoofer this makes sense so i suggest you play music with deep bass and you from left you start to turn this higher until you hear a little less low frequencies then go back three to four millimeters so that you don't lose bass frequencies which your subwoofer can produce as its lowest frequency but in this case you relax the subwoofer from the electrical power which it cannot produce into sound and as well you're relaxing the amplifier from working in a range of frequency which you don't need and this could be up to 30 percent or more which are now available for the range that you hear so relax the amp relax the sub get more out of it there's a phase here it's uh, steadily turning the phase from zero phase to up to 270 degrees that must be tested by listening so the phase means is important for the frequency which comes from the subwoofer and the satellite as well you cannot just cut so steep that you can say that's the sub that's a satellite they are overlapping and if they overlapping and both speakers are not in phase but a little bit like this or like this this means they are out of phase and this can help you to make them into phase otherwise one is going up one is going down you have a hole in the frequency response or they making too much noise then you have a mountain on the frequency response it's difficult to listen you need two person one is sitting and listening the other is turning here and then find out what gives you the best sound on the back side you see a output this is the input this is the output this output can go to another amp for the higher frequency and with this satellite low cut you can cut the low frequency from the satellite speaker uh, just the opposite from the high cut this cuts the high this cuts the low and then the signal is going to the satellite speaker to the amplifier of course and then the satellite get relaxed from the heavy low frequencies and will sound better and you is more capital capable to produce higher sound pressure this is the alternate input if you don't have an RCA uh, input from your preamp let's say you have a full range and you are not having any possibility to connect here you can use your speaker cables just thin parallel to your speakers going left and right so you are sending the signal from your main amp into this one through the speaker cable and then you have the same effect as here of course if you have RCA outputs this would be better because the quality is a little bit better however for subwoofer frequency it doesn't matter much we have automatic fuse just in case something happened very unlikely and another important thing is this switch here normally it's connected to ground in this case the ground is connected to your house ground but if your house ground is sensitive to some bad noise from other units connected to the house then it could happen that 
there is bad noise coming from this source and here you can switch to lift then this is disconnected and there's silence. The amp delivers 400 watt at 2 ohms therefore you are able to have two standard 4 ohm speakers connected parallel. And of course on 4 ohms the power is smaller. 2 ohm capable means this is the highest power available on 2 ohms.